What's up guys, this is Ben from 606X and today I'm going to be explaining our catapult and intake system and how it all works together. All right, so you can see right away, we have the intake wheels, three stages, and then we have our catapult system on uh, the top part of intake. So it's a lot to explain, but we'll get through it. This, uh, this shaft covered with the spacers here is actually the motor shaft. So it's being, being driven by two motor power. You can see this motor is connected to the shaft right here. And then you can also see this motor is being powered to the shaft right here too. Um, this, I'll start with the catapult. This uh, catapult is uh, driven by a 12 tooth to five, or 12 tooth to uh, 60 tooth, which is a one to five. And right here you can see our, our ratchet. We use four poles on the ratchet, like the little arms that spin around the, the ratchet gear. Uh, so I'll intake right now. You can see the, you can see the poles are moving around the, the little gear, meaning that the catapult is not engaged. And then when I shoot, the uh, system spins the other way, and then it engages the catapult gear. Yeah, so that's how our catapult works. We also have a, uh, uh, a little ratchet here to keep the catapult down. So when we're, when we need to, uh, when we need to intake and the catapult's no longer being powered, we have the, uh, this little hinge here and it clicks. Meaning that it holds the catapult down when we're not, uh, when we're not shooting or drawing it back. Uh, and when it's, when it's being um, held down, this is the prime state for our intake. So I'll show that real quick. Yeah. So then they all go into the catapult super consistently, which is very nice. Uh, we tune this intake a lot and it comprises of two inch wheels pretty much all the way up. So two inch, two inch, and then two inch wheels. Uh, we found that these are the best for intaking because they have a lot of compression. Uh, so you see they, they squishy, they're really squishy. And then they also allow to use um, larger sprockets, which means like less chain skipping and the chain doesn't have to go around a tighter diameter. So it's a little bit less friction. So I'll show the intake again. It's a super strong system because it's powered by two motors and it's geared um, through this shaft here. So basically this intake is always connected to these two motors through this chain. So this is two to one. And that, so that means that this silver shaft is spinning at 400 RPM. And then this shaft is connected another two to one ratio uh, down there. I don't know if you can see it down here that's an eight tooth uh eight tooth sprocket so then that the intake is running at 800 rpm and then it's just geared to one to one all throughout all right so then uh our roller mech is on the back of the bot because that's how we prefer uh rolling the rollers and the way we did that is this intake chain that is flowing all the way back here uh it's kind of disassembled right now so don't judge it too much, but it spins like that. This is uh, going back here. And then we have more sprockets, the two eight twos here to connect to here, double, uh, double chain roller. So then we have extra security and our roller chain doesn't break. But right now we, we took apart the roller because we actually need those parts for our next bot. Um, yeah, and then our intake ramp is mounted with zip ties. It's very, very low to the ground. I'll flip the robot over real quick. And you can see here that we use a structure of um, the standoffs and then the L channels spanning across the bot to support the intake. And then if I go around here, then we can see intake is also supported here with these standoffs. And then one thing that's super nice about this intake system is that or the intake ramp is that if we want to adjust the compression all we got to do is add more spacers on here 
and then it'll be squeezed in or out. And go ahead and show uh, how the intake, uh, I guess, slurps and discs with also our funnels. So basically the range of the intake is from the corners of the bot, which is 26 holes, 13 inches. So go ahead and then start forward. So it, it still intakes it all the same, even if it's on the very corners. I don't know where the last disc went. Ah, oh, it's right there. There we go. So then it's intaking all three discs. Um, and I think that pretty much wraps it up for our catapult to intake. I can go into the catapult right now. So the catapult is connected uh, with these bars here. So this is a uh, six long L channel with the catapult structure mounted on it like that. So this is our plate. It's pretty, pretty rigid, I guess, to the catapult. And then you notice that when the catapult is um is firing i guess the plate angle stays the same so it's basically uh translating there's no rotational mo uh motion of the plate so i can shoot it right now it's a little bug that we're still working on but so you can see uh with the discs in place this is how it shoots pretty much perfect grouping every time we have cross spacing here to Keep the arms together so with our slip gears if you can see we actually have a coupler in there a coupler in this gear and this basically allows us to to treat the slip gear like a collar um and then this uh reduces the slot between the gear and the shaft because one thing with the double slip gear so we have two slip gears uh one one back here you can see it right there and then another over here one thing with the double slip gears is that it's really hard to keep both sides shooting at the same time otherwise you have because like vex has a lot of slop in their parts so this is a really good way to reduce the slop um yeah and then the arm is braced here this is a hard stop right here it's also boxed and you can see that the arm is actually pivoting around a live joint this is the uh slip gear joint or sl slip gear slip gear axle i guess so it's here and then here this is an 84 tooth gear that the arm is connected to and we have the banding from this this arm it goes to the front of the bot and that's how it's powered.